Energy Landia is one of the world's strangest amusement parks. It's built up a lot of publicity over the past couple of years because they have been expanding like crazy. This is a park that has been open for less than 10 years. It opened mid 2014, originally only housing three roller coasters. And then each year, they kept on expanding and expanding. In 2018, they added Hyperion. That really put them on the map. One year after, Zadra. Then they recently added Abyssus. Now they're adding even more roller coasters. I think there's currently like three under construction. They're on track to soon have the most roller coasters at any single park in the world. And they're located in like southwestern Poland. If that already sounds strange, wait till you visit this place. What a bizarre park. I like to refer to it as a beautiful disaster because Energylandia is both the worst and the best at the same time. The front half feels extremely different from the back half because right when you walk in, that's what you see from the original park when they're just getting started. The back half is the newer aspects of Energylandia when things actually start getting pretty nice. Like if I were to show you footage of one section compared to another, you'd probably assume that they are from two completely different parks because there is no cohesion at all whatsoever. And so as you're taking a look at all this, you might be wondering, what happened? Well, Energylandia is partially subsidized by the government of Poland. They're trying to draw more tourists to this area, and so they've been giving them money like crazy to say, hey, let's try and make this park the best that we possibly can make it. And in my opinion, it feels like there was almost like a change in ownership or like something clicked because the first couple of years might as well have been a permanent fairground. Everything that was installed was fairly low quality, not really a lot of thought put into everything. And then once they started doing the back section of the park, they actually started doing theming. And so you look at this medieval section the Zadra's in, I mean, it looks fantastic. Aqualantis, where Abyssus is. I mean, I know they're still working on it, trying to improve certain areas, but even that looks pretty good. And soon they're going to be opening up Sweet Valley, which looks to be a really cool kids section. So as you can imagine, I was ecstatic to hang out in the back part of this park, but every time I was walking around the front half, I was like, ugh, I don't really want to be here. That's where a lot of that confusion comes in. So I'll kind of go into a deeper analysis of the front half of Energylandia and then work our way to the back. But of course, first we have to start with what you're going to notice and see as you actually arrive at the park. So the first things first, Energylandia is located in the town of Zader. You're literally driving past like fields and then there's just like Zadra and Hyperion right there. These are like 200 plus foot tall roller coasters. You can see them from like way far away. But the park is located like right next to a bunch of houses. It's really crazy. But there's not much like directly next to the park, aside from like a gas station. You won't even really find like a bunch of really close hotels. If you're looking to stay right next to Energylandia, your best bet is probably Holiday Park, not to be confused with Holiday Park in Germany. This is where you can sleep in like a literal pod right outside of Zadra. There's also this like frontier style village where you can sleep in like a wagon or an actual oversized teepee. This is something we were originally looking into doing, but we ended up staying actually about 20 minutes away from the park in the town of Oschweim or in English, Auschwitz. Yes, Auschwitz is about 20 minutes away from Energylandia. So as you can imagine, it's a very odd juxtaposition going from like one of the most depressing places in the world to Energylandia, which is like overly bright and colorful. And it's just very bizarre. But do yourself a favor and visit Auschwitz while you're in the area. It really is eye-opening. But back to Energylandia, the main place where you can park your car is right outside of this awesome castle-like structure. This very grand entry, awesome way to make a first impression. You can see it from like anywhere. But interestingly enough, the first day that we went here, we actually had to park all the way in Overflow, which is to the side of the park. And then they brought us to the entrance on trams. I guess we went on a particularly busy day, but then when we came the next morning, the park was dead. We parked right up front. It was super easy. One thing I like about this entry experience is that when you look directly to your right, Hyperion runs right up against the parking lot. You can actually get pretty close to it. It's pretty cool. This ride is huge. It literally looks like a giga coaster. There's already a full separate review of that attraction up on this channel. So be sure to go check that out if you want to hear more about Hyperion. But if you get to Energy Landia at opening, you'll probably notice they do a show like right at the front entrance. In this plaza, you'll see a bunch of costume characters and performers. It's a pretty cool way to start the day and they also do it at the end of the day. It's very festive. After you pass under that entrance, you can buy your day tickets to the right. Interestingly enough, when we got our tickets, we were gifted Oreos for free. I guess as a thank you for coming to Energy Landia. I don't know, I wasn't mad. And then as we're going through the turnstiles we can hear their really catchy theme song playing energy land yeah energy land yeah trust me it'll be stuck in your head the entire time that you're at the park and that's where you get to the front half of energy landia this is the weird part of the park 
everything is cluttered and dysfunctional. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is an absolute mess. Pathways are extremely narrow for how many rides there are. And there's a lot of crap. I'm sorry to be blunt, but they definitely picked quantity over quality here. And you'll find lots of just random statues scattered throughout. Many of them are for a specific ride or loose theming for an area or building. But then when you're walking through it, it doesn't seem to make any sense at all. And I'm fairly certain that they did not have the license to use a lot of these characters. So they just changed them slightly and hope that no one will notice. Should I list off some of the knockoffs? The Penguins of Madagascar. Legos, the trees from the Lorax, the magic school bus, the other characters from Madagascar, these dudes from like Alien TV, Mater from Cars. I don't know what these are from, but they definitely look like knockoff characters from something, so I'm gonna assume they are. Dumbo, the flying elephant, Transformers, and finally, the seven dwarves. It is actually hilarious to walk around this section and try and find like everything wrong with it. Like you go in one area and it's like a runaway circus. There's just animals everywhere. Then you walk a couple of feet in front of you and now there is a pyramid with a bunch of camels. It's like you're in Egypt. And then you keep going, now you're in a medieval village. It is so strange. And the problem is that this is what you see right when you enter the park and it is not a great first impression. But thankfully the park gets better, so it's all worth it. You just have to get through all this first in order to reach your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. One of the first things we actually did when we got to Energylandia is we found this little pierogi stand. Because we were getting there right at opening, that ended up being our breakfast, which is fine. I just wish that they had some better breakfast options. Like my preferred choice definitely would have been Magic Spoon, which reinvents your childhood favorites with that same great taste you love, but with more protein and less sugar. Magic Spoon is the perfect brand for your grab and go eating at the parks or before you head out in the morning. And considering that those pierogies were not so great, Magic Spoon absolutely would have been an improvement there. The cereal comes in four great flavors. Fruity, cocoa, frosted, and peanut butter. Personally, I'm a big fan of cocoa, but fruity is definitely a close second. By the way, no matter which you pick, each serving has 13 to 14 grams of protein, 4 to 5 net grams of carbs, and 0 grams of sugar. That's only 140 calories per serving. Plus, all of it is keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. And it's crazy, because it doesn't even taste like something that'd be diet-friendly, but it is. Go to magicspoon.com slash coaster or use the promo code COASTER in all caps when you go to checkout and you'll get $5 off any order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. You hear that, Energylandia? I'm counting on you to have that next time I come to visit. Some of the other things that we had to eat while we were at Energylandia, we found a crepe stand up front. That was actually pretty great. It was made with fresh fruit, so I quite enjoyed that. Our main meal was in the back of the park near Zadra. It was this like chicken stand, like it might as well have been KFC. Great deal for a bucket of chicken tenders. We shared it between the four of us and actually really liked it. Plus it smelled amazing. You could literally smell the chicken while going down the first drop of Zadra. That's a great combo. So some of the things I noticed as I was walking around the park, Energylandia definitely has a thing for ruins. We saw like Egyptian pyramids, Mayan ruins, all of Aqualantis is themed to ruins, the ruins from a volcano. And all of this is scattered throughout. So there's once again, no consistency. But the reason that they have Mayan ruins is because they have a physical roller coaster called Mayan. It's their Vacoma SLC, actually the very last Vacoma SLC ever built. It's actually a really impressive station facade right when you walk up to it. It's not a bad ride experience either. Probably the second best SLC I've ever ridden behind, of course, Great Nor'easter at Maurice Piers. Right next to it is the park's drop tower, and this is the saddest excuse for a drop tower I think I've ever seen. Like if I were to do a worst drop towers list, this might be number one. I'd say don't bother, but honestly, you should ride it just because of how hilariously bad it is. This park can do so much better. Like they have actually some pretty good rides that we're going to talk about later. They should have a better drop tower than this. Near that drop tower is a roller coaster called Viking. This is one of the original rides from Energylandia, and it is also one of the worst coasters on the planet. It's a spinning wild mouse, but with over the shoulder restraints. Don't know what that's all about, but it is terrible. I do not recommend it. The park did have one dark ride, which we made sure to experience. It was set up like a very old classic dark ride. It was a monster theme, which was fun. Again, it didn't match anything else in the park, but like that's to be expected at this point. It was solid. Like I was kind of laughing through the whole thing. I thought it was funny. I liked at the end when all of the different vehicles like stacked on each other because like that definitely wasn't supposed to happen. This Mars themed kids coaster is pretty funny. It's actually like good theming for a kids coaster. I like how elaborate it is. Also right up towards the front is 
Energylandia's water park. It is called, funny enough, Big Milk. Yeah, the Big Milk Water Park. We did not go inside, but it is cool that they have that option for people who are looking to ride some slides. You know, one part of the front half of the park that I was actually like fairly impressed with is this area right here. You have this water ride going through all these flowers and it looks like a botanical garden. It's very calm as you're walking through this plant life. There's even a really cool bridge that goes over it that gives you a nice view. But as soon as you exit that little area, you're back in all the randomness. Nearby is a tiny little log flume. We rode it just because of how hilarious it was. Also nearby is one of two Vacoma family boomerangs here. Yes, they have two because one just wasn't enough. They also have like three of these monorail style attractions, soon to be two carousels, and several Vacoma family coasters that feel very similar to each other. And you know what? I'm sure they'll keep building more. Thank goodness they at least space them out a little. There's a wacky worm theme to like fruit and vegetables. And that's also where the entrance to Hyperion is. It's a shame that this is in the front half of the park because if this wasn't here, I wouldn't want to ever visit this section of Energylandia. But I have to because I gotta go ride Hyperion. But it just feels very out of place because that has a pretty cool theme and it doesn't match everything else. There's an upscale SBF Visa, one of the larger models. You'll find an Intamin water coaster. This is a clone layout, the same as like the one at Mirabilandia, for instance. And then you get to the other two good rides in the front half of the park, Dragon and Formula. Dragon is one of the Vacoma family suspended coaster clones, same as like Dragonflyer at Dollywood. It's partially over water and there's like a dragon statue there. It's pretty cool. And then next to that is Formula. I'd say that was their first ride that really got people noticing this park. It was also the start of like Vacoma's renaissance, coming out with like really good thrill coasters. I have plans to do a full review of Formula at some point, but that's a really good ride. And then you get to the back half of Energylandia. You're gonna have to pass under a literal road via this tunnel. And when you come out the other side, the atmosphere completely changes. Everything is now quality over quantity. It's experience space. You get actual theming and it's consistent. If there is a downside to it, it's that it's not quite done. This part of the park is meant to be a full loop and it will be once Sweet Valley opens. We could see some of the construction for it. Everything's gonna be like food themed. Like you can see some giant cookies there. Looks pretty nice. The entrance to that will be directly to the left when you come out of the tunnel. So unfortunately that does mean when you get all the way back to Abyssus, you'll have to turn around and go all the way back down this pathway, but it'll be really nice when it's finished. When you turn to your right, you'll see like some nice chairs to lounge in. There's their newest addition as of when this video is being recorded. It's a massive observation wheel. Looks really good. Fun ride experience too. The view is awesome. Everything's just really visually pleasing to look at. Back there, there's another kid's coaster and this family coaster. That's pretty much when the medieval theming ends. And then you're walking on this pathway that kind of bumps up against the perimeter of the park. I imagine we'll see an expansion there at some point. We know Energy Land is going to be adding a Vacoma tilt coaster. To my knowledge, we don't know yet where it's going. But if I had to take a guess, it'll be in the back half of the park. And then that's when you enter Aqualantis. Now, I know I already talked about some of this in the Abyssus review I already did. But I really like the vibe that they went for. Obviously, it's very Atlantis inspired. The color palette they chose is really nice with like the blue paths of the track and this brown stonework. Don't expect this theming to be better than like what Fantasia Land or Europa Park or Port Aventura does, but it's not bad at all. I look forward to seeing everything when they finally finish it. So you got a couple rides in this section. There's a slow moving boat ride, which is really nice. It interacts with the second Vacoma family boomerang here. I like this one more than the other one. There's a disco, of course, Abyssus. Right next to it is also a diving show, which is pretty nice. And the whole area is just very spread out. You actually have wide open paths ways. And so it actually makes you want to spend some time there. And that pretty much does it for a breakdown of the different areas and attractions of Energylandia. A couple general thoughts I have. Operationally, this park was stellar. Really fast dispatches. Overall, we waited in very short lines while at Energylandia. Even when it was busy the first day, the lines moved quick. And I believe one reason for this is because of their loose article policy. Every ride here has the Velocicoaster style lockers and they're amazing. What you do is when you get to your first attraction, you can get a wristband that'll work for all day. You scan it, you put your items in the bin, which is right before you enter the station so you're able to have your things with you for most of the line. You ride and then when you exit, you go to the other side of the locker and pick them up because they're double sided. It is fantastic. And while we were there, I don't recall anything going down at all. It seemed like every traction was very reliable. We always knew what was open and how long the lines were because they had wait time boards posted throughout the park. 
They are updated frequently and overall pretty accurate. It's something that I really wish more parks would get because it absolutely enhanced our experience. Especially when you think about how big Energylandia is, you don't want to walk all the way over to one ride just to find out it has a crazy long line when another one's really short. I was also really impressed with how organized everything was. The platforms were kept pretty much empty, and there's a physical counter next to your turnstile that would update you with how many seats were left on the train. So as you went through, the counter would go down, you'd pick your row, and you'd walk right onto the ride. It was really cool, because then you didn't need a grouper, that's one less position to fill, and the guests themselves can see, oh, there's two seats left on this train, is there a group of two? So definitely liked that. If there was a downside to Energylandia, we had some interactions with multiple employees that I would define as cold. Like it wasn't really friendly, warm, or inviting. I was told there was actually a cultural thing, which is just a stark contrast from what you'll see at like a lot of other European parks where friendliness was like through the roof. Like you look at the Denmark parks, everyone there just has a smile on their face. And I just don't know if I would really say that here, but it's not across the board. We did meet some employees who were nice and smiling, but it seemed like they were kind of few and far between. One thing that I was impressed with Energylandia is they actually had longer operating hours than most European parks, which is something that I really appreciated. We could really spend like a full day here at Energylandia. And the other thing is that I thought this park was actually pretty affordable, both in your admission costs as well as the price for food. And maybe that's because if you are visiting from another country, the currency exchange actually works in your favor. We thought Poland was one of the cheaper countries to visit in Europe, which is actually a great incentive to go back. So overall, what did I think of Energylandia? Landia. Would I go back? Well, yeah, I have to. They have two world-class roller coasters there with Zadra and Hyperion. They were incredible. If those rides weren't there, I mean, I don't know. It's just so tough because like you have literally half of this park, which I did not like at all. I'd probably put it on there as like one of the worst parks I've ever been to. And then this other section that is like fantastic. So I feel like the best solution here is after Energylandia opens Sweet Valley and they build their tilt coaster, what they should do is focus on redoing the front half of this park. Remove a lot of the garbage, actually put in some consistently themed sections, and do what you did with the other areas, quality over quantity. I'm not saying all of it needs to go, but if they really focused on revamping the front half of this park, I think it would make a night and day difference. Because right now, I'm really not sure that I would say Energylandia is one of the best parks in Europe. I feel like I can't say that. But they're really close. They're doing so much right, and it seems like they're heading in that upwards trajectory. If they keep it up, then I think they could really do more excellent things with this park. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So let me know down in the comments below if you've been to Energylandia, what did you think of it? Do you agree with the points that I've brought up? Do you think there's anything I left out? Be sure to post those comments down below and stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.